Today I want to talk to you about what can we learn from the book of Revelation. Now I know that probably your reaction is, oh, I don't understand Revelation. It's too complicated. It's too mystical. I just don't understand it. But let me just give you some background to why I'm doing this. I've been talking a lot about Matthew 24. Luke 21. There are other Gospels like Mark 13 that talk about the end times and give us some information. But we, we desperately want to know, or well, some of us do, we want to know what's going to happen to our earth in all these wars and so on and pandemics that are going on. We want to know, desperately want to know. And so there's a great demand in society for psychics, people with crystal balls, that, by the way, behind me is a globe. It's not a crystal ball. Just joking. Now, people who want to know, when you suggest, well, the answer's in the book of Revelation, they say, no, no, it's too mystical. I can't understand it. You know, well, this is the whole idea of, uh, of being a teacher. I'm trying to make difficult things or complicated things simple to understand. Who wrote Revelation? The Apostle John. John was a very close friend of Jesus at the last Passover meal that they had together. John was resting, as the Bible says, on Jesus' bosom. In other words, he had his head on his chest. Now, you don't sit with your head on somebody's chest unless you're close friends with them. You might sit shoulder to shoulder, but he was actually leaning on Jesus' chest. He was the closest disciple Jesus loved John, John loved Jesus. It was, it was just a bonding there. Now, Jesus explained to John, and John recorded it in his gospel, John 15. He said that, uh, I call you friends. He called his disciples friends because he made known to them the secrets of his heart. You don't share your secrets with servants. Jesus said, I don't call you servants anymore. I call you friends. This is John 15, 15. But if we're friends, then, you know, Jesus felt secure to let John know some real big secrets. And so John ended up by writing his gospel. He wrote, he wrote uh, three short letters, which are brilliant. And also he had the revelation God actually called him up to heaven and said, look, let me show you what's going to happen in the future. Now, as I say, society spends umpteen amounts of money on psychics and crystal ball readers and palmistry and all that stuff, which is built upon occult practices. And yet if you suggest to them, well, read Revelation, he tells you all the answers that you want to know. It's like, oh, no, no, I can't. I just cannot understand it. Well, this particular book, which people dismiss because it's too mystical and so on, if you read the beginning of it, it says in Revelation 1 verse 3, a joyous blessing rests upon the one who reads this message and upon those who hear and embrace the words of this prophecy. So if you eat, just read Revelation, you're going to be blessed. Blessed means empowered to prosper. So will you accompany me in the videos that I'm going to make in the next few days or next weeks maybe, I'm not sure how long this is going to take me, will you accompany me in an unveiling ceremony, the unveiling ceremony of Jesus Christ and what he's going to do, what's the world going to uh, be doing in as, as the revelation is unfolded, what is Jesus going to do? How is this all going to play out? How is he going to wrap up? Instead of wasting your time on money who, and money on people who, who use demons to tell you the future, just read the Bible and read Revelation with me. There are 22 chapters. And in it, in this book of Revelation, you will find so many answers to things that you don't know. For instance, are you sure that Christians are going to be taken out before the tribulation. You read Revelation, you find out. And uh, it's, it's as sure as sure as that. What is going to happen in the world? Well, it tells you in Revelation. The first three chapters of the book of Revelation are messages from God 
to the seven churches in Asia. These sections are fascinating in themselves, but it's not what I want to look at with you. I want to walk you through a simple, easy to understand format of the chapters which deal with future events, the end times. Chapter four of Revelation, remember there's 22 chapters, chapter four of Revelation describes the scene in heaven around the throne. The church of God, the church of Jesus Christ is represented in Revelation 4 as the 24 elders of the heavenly Sanhedrin. That's in Revelation 4 and verse 10. Now the church is there because it's been raptured, it's been taken up. Now when you get through the first three chapters talking to the churches that were in existence in Asia, and then John saw in chapter 4 the church in heaven, the church is there because it's been raptured. And after chapter 4 and chapter 5, the church is not even mentioned because the rest of Revelation are the judgments that God is going to bring upon the earth because of its sin and because of its rejection of Christ as the Messiah. So our study will start in chapter 5, verse 1, where you've got a picture of Father God seated on the throne, holding the title deeds of the earth in his hands. And this sealed scroll contains all the secrets that we want to know about the future of our planet and things that are going to happen and the order in which they're going to be happening. It's a fascinating study. Who is going to open this document? It's a sealed document in Father's hands. Who's going to be able to take it out of Father's hand, open it and declare what's going to happen inside it. It's sealed, it's locked away, but it's going to be opened and the secrets are going to be out. And I want to share those secrets with you. So join me in the next few videos and we'll have a great time together.